Okie dokie, today we are going to go over all of the free changes you'll be getting with the Thrones of Decay that come out. This is if you spend no money whatsoever, your game just updates, you will get these free changes. Now, I'm not allowed to post a review yet, and I don't intend to, because I have not gotten to play with any of the DLC units. I've only interacted with the free content as of this point. But I do have to say that this is some of the most ambitious free LC content ever, and so far, I am super positive on it. I'm having such a great time. But, like, if you know this channel, you know that I'm not really a kind of hype and for fun person. I take things very, like, seriously and get deep into the numbers and stuff. And this free LC is looking extremely balanced and fun. Um, I'm having a ton of... A, a great time with it. It's just awesome. So let's get through all the free stuff you get. I'm not a big campaign guy. I'm mostly multiplayer, but the campaign change I will note is Balthazar Gelt has moved from the Empire all the way over to Cathay, where he can learn some more gunpowder type things and maybe some more fun magics for himself. That'll further increase the diversity of rosters over in the East, so it's not just a Cathay show, and more factions could get interacting with the Empire early on. That's quite nice. I haven't checked out the camp Empire or Dwarf campaigns. I might do a video on those if I really can hop in, but I haven't had the time. And there's other content creators that'll do that. So we're mostly going to focus on multiplayer here. Now, maybe I shouldn't start out on a negative note, but I will say the Nurgle changes, while they're kind of fun, are actually nerfs. And we'll get to that overall. But for the free LC content for Nurgle, you do get a great unclean one. And he has a fun new ability, uh, Nurglings Emerge. It's like the Skaven Slaves popping out of the Hell Pit Abomination when he dies. If a Great Unclean One or an Exalted Great Unclean One die, you do get a unit of Nurglings that pops up for a little bit, and then it is a summon, so it'll degrade over time. So, that's just kind of a fun little mini thing, as I'm going to send this guy to go fight Marcus Wolfhart. On the other side for the free LC, you do get the free Lord Epidemus. He's cool. He'll be fine in campaign. And I get yelled at for this a lot. He'll be fine in campaign. He's free. I'm not complaining. I don't wish he was out of the game, anything like that, right? But just from a multiplayer competitive standpoint, he kind of sucks. His price point is like 1850. He has no mount options besides his weird Palaquin throne thing. He's not particularly tanky. He's kind of tanky, but not particularly tanky. His melee stats are okay, but his speed hurts him really bad. He's not a very good duelist. And then like, this Epidemic Outburst has weird anti-synergy. It's, it's an explosion that happens every so often. But look at that at the bottom. Contagious Lethargy. 10 seconds, minus 80 speed, and minus 80% charge speed. Cool, but this is the slowest guy in the entire game. So if you caught something to be able to use your explosion and slow it down, it, it probably isn't trying to run away. Because <laughs> if it's trying to run away, you would have never caught it. This is the slowest unit in the whole game. So it's like, okay, you might slow down the Spearman you're sitting in. Uh, I don't know. So that's kind of whatever. Exalted Plague Bearer Summon is fine. That's actually fine. No complaints. And then his Sands of Sickness is also fine. But he has a fundamental problem, and it's the Tally of Pestilence. It's an intensity ramping up physical resistance and melee attack buff for any nearby uh, demonic units. It's got a pretty good range on it, so that's nice. No problems there. But the problem, like, the actual problem with the ability is demons don't work well for this kind of thing. It's going to charge up over the course of the battle. Well, in an average Nurgle game, what's left at the end? It's not Plague Bearers and Nurglings and Plague Toads. It's Marauders. It's Marauders, Chaos Warriors, Chosen, that kind of thing. Mortal units. Mortal units are not affected by this. It only helps demonic units. All your demonic units are going to die instantly before this ever charges up. So it's just kind of like super asynergistic because it's like in the late game, you'll buff your demons who are all gone. It just doesn't, it doesn't work well. And sure, it buffs him, but again, he's a half-assed melee lord. It's not really worth it to give him 20% more physical resistance and melee attack. And it's just physical resistance where everybody and their grandmother knows to take da magic damage versus demons anyway. So it's just kind of like, he's okay. He's not Queek Head Taker levels of trash, but he's not good. He's fun. People will enjoy him in campaign. I appreciate free characters being free, but I don't think you'll see him in many multiplayer games. He's just kind of around. All right, this is the last negative thing, I promise. But Nurgle also got a rework to how their army ability charges up. Now, it doesn't change their army ability. It just changes how they're charged. Instead of being charged by you taking damage, they're charged by when you apply debuffs. All your units give poison, and a lot of your units have various different um, little abilities that do decent damage here and there. But it takes a while to charge them up. And in my practice games with other people, 
it is feeling much slower to charge up the army abilities. There have been multiple games where I got literally one fecundity was all of the army ability I got. So overall, it does feel like a nerf to Nurgle. Now, I think it's a positive nerf in some aspects. Tiny blob builds won't charge army ability nearly as fast as they used to because you're just not, you know, you used to be able to just soak damage and get army ability. So that'll be healthier for the game overall, but that does mean Nurgle blobs are worse and they're four. That is a nerf to Nurgle. It takes a long time to charge up army passive, um, which could be a problem. I think they probably need to, like, update it and make it charge a little bit faster, but also Rot Glorious Rot was unchanged, so it's still a terrible army ability, maybe the worst army ability in the entire game. Actually, not even maybe, it is the worst army ability in the entire game. So, Nurgle, overall, uh, if you don't buy the DLC, did get a teeny tiny little nerf in multiplayer competitive play. Though again, it's mostly nerfed their blobs, which I will not miss. Okay, now there's some things I can't show you, so every so often I will be using blockers just to get in the way of things I am not allowed to or not don't have access to showing just yet. But if you take a look between the two blockers, you'll see the dwarves got a bit of an extended roster update. That means if you're playing some for fun games with your friends or in some of our tournaments where we allow extended rosters, there will be more options for you. There's this new Grudge Settler class, which is a whole bunch of fun little standard units that got a bit of a buff. Some of them have frenzy... Uh, others have different special abilities, like these Slayers have uh, Armor Sundering on their attacks. So the extended rosters get updated, which means these units will be available in campaign through various mechanics, but also for some of our for fun tournaments, so it's just nice. You know, I'll never complain about getting some free extended roster units. We do have a 3 for 1 change, but I'll count it as just one. There is a new ability for Ungram and the Slayers, and then the Giant Slayers. They all have the Slayer trait. And a Slayer cannot have their weapon strength reduced during a battle. This means they can ignore poison or like Nurgle's weapon strength debuff or wounds, right? Can't have your weapon strength uh, lowered at all. So Slayers will keep fighting at the very end. Good for you, little Slayers. And we also have the Master Engineer. Master Engineer got a new passive ability, Artillery Master. Plus 30 accuracy and reload skill for an artillery or war machine type unit nearby. The Master Engineer is very expensive if you take all of his abilities and all of his items and stuff, but he has been kind of fun for a little bit of, like, picking out what you're shopping for. So you're going to be like, oh, this game I want to take him as, like, a super, super artillery buffing guy, and the next game kind of want to take him as, like, a poke and firing of Thorycaster, and then next game you want to take him for restock to do gyrocopters. That stuff can be kind of fun. You can make him cheaper that way. But, uh, yeah, the Engineer has a ton of abilities now. But now we're getting into the really good stuff. So, one of the big reworks is the Dwarves got an entire change to their air fleet. Gyro Bombers are now four models, while Gyrocopters are 12 apiece. Their DPS hasn't increased that much, but what is nice about them is they're much more interactive for both parties. The other side, uh, like the Empire here, if they had guns or whatever, they have more models to shoot at, especially with the 12 model ones. And they don't have any more HP than they used to, so they're easily knocked out of the sky, and then you can reduce their damage. So a little bit less, like, dwarf kite builds or whatever that some people in multiplayer really didn't enjoy. But their DPS is overall the same, so don't worry. It's not like they have times for the DPS as per usual. Gyro Bombers are struggling a little bit here with infantry, though that's not exactly surprising. They are meant to be single entity snipers. So I'll get them to shoot at Marcus Wolfhart. They also did get a change to how their bombs work. See these guys now drop four bombs. And then the Skyhammer, the ROR, if he flies over, he only has five bombs. But they're a little different. They have scatter bombs. So that's quite nice. Overall, I do think it'll be a slight nerf to the Dwarven Air Force, but I'm guessing with this type of DLC that's coming out, they want to have more Air Forces uh, rather than super elite ones. But here come the fun units. So a bit of a change in the Gyrocopter Brimstone Guns and Gyrocopters with the Steam Cannons. Now, the Steam Cannons used to be the anti-infantry, non-armor-piercing stuff. Now, the Steam Cannons still do okay versus infantry here and there. But they're much more single entity focused and cavalry focused with armor piercing missiles. That got changed around a little bit. And you might be like, hey man, that's kind of weird. So now both gyrocopters are single entity snipers? No, I've saved the best for last as I'm going to just show you their bombing run real quick. So pretty okay little bombs on these spearmen. 
But, uh, so if the, the brimstone guns are no longer the single entity snipers, it's the steam guns, well then, what do the brimstone guns do? Well, uh, they're now the infantry clearing ones. You can see they have a burnt debuff and fire ammunition. What does that possibly mean? Flamethrower helicopters! <laughs> So the brimstone guns have taken the place of the steam cannon, uh, the steam versions as now shooting at infantry, and they do use flamethrowers to pretty great effect at damaging light infantry. And with um, flamethrowers, they do have the burnt leadership debuff. As I need to stop shooting at these guys that are directly under me because it's clearly causing some issues. Okay, one more volley so we can move on. There we go. So it's pretty light damage, but from a skirmish unit that's up in the sky, flooding around, it's not as, uh, it's not toxic, really, if they just don't delete things. But it'll be good versus Greenskins and Skaven and such, though as you can see, ground-based armor-piercing uh, ranged definitely does a lot of damage to these gyrocopters. And their reload time is pretty long. So, more and more and more and more changes, there's always more changes. Uh, we did get, I believe, a damage buff and a VFX change for our cannons. Look a little smoother. And then their impacts are more impactful, like, VFX-wise. And I feel like they do more damage, but I'm not sure. A big change I can guarantee you is true is Flame Cannons got a rework. And instead of firing out fireballs, we do get now... Arcs of Dragonfire that go straight into the Spearman lines and do a pretty good amount of damage. I actually don't know if it's a buff or not, but I do know it is very different than it used to be. But look at the cannon's damage on those war wagons. I feel like it's better. Feel like it. But we'll see in the comparison. Either way, the VFX do seem a little bit improved. All right, so just pop it in to see the old flame cannons again, so you just can really get a, a sense of how different they are. Instead of firing these single projectiles, it's obviously a stream in the live version. Oh, well, not the live version, sorry, the, the Thrones of Decay version, but uh, I'll say the, da the damage is maybe actually a nerf in the Thrones of Decay version, because the flame cannons on live are very, very powerful as far as DPS go against infantry. It's just their short range and expense that holds them back. And then the cannons. We'll see how much damage they do on uh, live patch. I'm not sure if they got the buff or not. It's a little harder to tell. Oh god, yeah, they do a lot of damage to the war wagons even on live. Okay. So it looks like the Empire cannons got the up, like an update. And then the dwarf cannons, I still feel like there was a slight VFX update in there. But the damage appears to be the same. Because it just depends on how you hit the war wagons. Sometimes you can get a double or a triple hit or something. But Dwarf Cans clearly aren't struggling with that. Go, cannons, go. Another updated unit is the Iron Drakes of the Dwarves. They got a VFX update, but also an Arc of Fire update that really does help them hit instead of firing straight. They fire more in an arc now. These are the Smolder Solar Guard or whatever, but in comes those extra flames, and they do so much damage to the Empire Spearmen. And the Arcs of Fire are certainly a little bit better than they used to be. Also, there has been an update on these bars. You can see healing power now and things like that, and their hit points are more displayed. That's kind of fun. But yeah, I've been using the Iron Drakes in some of my little skirmishes with people, and they're, they're real solid. But I wonder if Iron Drakes got a bit of a change. Is there another unit that uses flamethrowers and is almost the exact same unit? Did they get improved? And here they are on the live patch, the old one. So we'll see how these guys do without those updates. On they go. Running forward. The first volley is out. Still pretty good damage. Yes, indeed. The Skaven Warp Fire Throwers have received the exact same love as the Dwarves, with, I believe, a slight VFX update, but more importantly, that Arc of Fire being changed and the amount of damage they can do is super important to how much they can achieve in their shots. So much more damage onto this Imperial front line. 
And what's key is not just their upfront burst. It is the arc of fire changes allows them to shoot while they have a front line engaged, which previously they would just sit around being obstructed. So let's get some Skaven slaves in between me and danger. As is my birthright. Triple fast forward. And get more spread out to really prove the point. All right, so we'll shoot at that. That's a favorable angle for me, but then we should be able to also just shoot these guys without being obstructed. The warp fire thrower is set up. And then they'll start firing straight through my Skaven slaves. Doing a little bit of damage to my own troops. But still overall hitting the Imperial front line as intended. Which is nice. It's proper Skaven tactics to harass the front line down a little bit at the trade of my extremely squishy little Skaven slaves. So that's fun. I enjoy that a lot. Warp fire throwers are pretty usable now. I don't think they'll be OP or anything. But they're usable. All right, Iron Drakes actually did do more damage than I thought. Like I knew Iron Drakes on the live patch weren't a bad unit, but they weren't exactly used a ton. But they did pretty good. See how this cave and warp fire throwers do on old. Yeah, pretty decent damage. Not a lot of changes there. And then let's get that front line going. Alright, so you guys all get in the way. Wolfmar continues to be a pain in the butt. I'll get these warp fire throws to turn. I wonder if maybe the damage isn't different, but they can just fire over their own troops now, and maybe that's a little better. Yeah, here they're doing, like, no damage. And they're just hitting the Skaven Slaves, and then getting obstructed, so this one's not even saying it can fire. That's worse. That is worse, for sure. On to the Empire updates. Maybe some of the most exciting ones. The dwarves were super awesome. Uh, the Empire got some love, too. The Witch Hunter, my favorite hero that is horrible just terrible is now less horrible and less terrible in my battles he has been fine and he did get two new things to help him be fine grim resolve is a constant itp aura with plus four leadership attached to it that helps all of his allies if he is in melee to proc it i know you can't see it under there maybe over here is better yeah over here is better I have to block some stuff down there, so sorry about that. But uh, yeah, Grim Resolve is good. And then Tools of Judgment is another thing he can bring. It's up there. Costs 150 gold. But um, Tools of Judgment, plus 12 melee attack and melee defense just for himself if a terror-causing unit is nearby. So you can opt into taking this in matchups where there might be, like, big monsters or demons or something that could cause terror. And if you don't think there is, then you can make him a bit cheaper. But the Grim Resolve ITP uh, leadership aura is always quite nice. And then Accusation is always a pretty good spell, so... Yeah, Witch Hunter's decent now, and I like his changes a lot. Next to him is this strange-looking wizard. It is a gold wizard. Gold wizard has all the normal stuff of the other Empire wizards. Um, you can see still is the Power Stone and Blast. And it's just the normal metal spells beneath the blocker, but... I can't move the blocker, or you'll see other things you're not supposed to see. So, yeah. Empire gets a metal wizard now. The Empire has also gotten numerous changes, and two of the ones that'll affect multiplayer the most will be Outriders and Warwagons. Now, Outriders aren't meta right now, and I really don't think they will be up to these changes, but they got carbines instead of handguns, so now they fire multiple shots. And they do some decent damage, but Warwagons got the same treatment and also fire multiple shots. Now, this seems like it would be good on paper, and they kind of do okay damage if they hit, but they do have a problem about if they miss, they really don't do that much. And the Warwagons especially, which, again, if you're if you're involved in multiplayer, you are very sick of the Warwagon meta, uh, for the most part. Warwagons don't do nearly as much damage, because now their weapon strength is split up between all those little extra rounds that are going through. And if they miss, which a lot of them do, you're not going to get in nearly the DPS you used to get. You see the Outriders here, when they're not at close range and Cetra isn't charging straight at them, they really don't get that much damage out, so... The Empire Skirmish game is going to take a little bit of a hit, though thematically it's more fun and more cool, all those extra bullets and all the stuff going through. And as you can see, the War Wagons and Outriders are still beating up on Cetra pretty good. It's just taking them a lot longer than you're used to seeing. 
So, not bad. Just different. And I think a little bit healthier than the War Wagons used to be. In the post game, the War Wagons got 500 and 400, and the Outriders, the one that wasn't running away all the time, got about 500. So now the Outriders match the DPS of the War Wagons a little bit better. Alright, so just checking out the old. The old Outriders and the old War Wagons. See how they do versus the same target, etc. And there's the first round of volleys. The War Wagons. Still doing what they can. They do more damage overall. No, I'll just sit and let him get shot. It felt like they killed him a little quicker. And the war wagons got more value than the outriders this time. So with the changes, the new changes, the outriders got more damage, the war wagons got less, and it took them a bit longer to kill Cetra. It felt like, while well, as in this one, sure they killed him faster, but it was largely on the back of the war wagons doing more damage. So, just little changes, little changes. As I boot in here, I will just say I checked out the Hellblaster volley gun and the dwarf organ gun. They didn't really seem that different to me. But the Empire also got some VFX love that uh, the Dwarves seem to. Their Mortars didn't actually get a buff, as far as I can tell, though maybe their accuracy is a bit different in-game. It'll be hard to tell. It's one of those things that you need patch notes to really understand. But um, they did get a VFX update on these little guys. Some Mortars now look a little prettier when they fire. Hurry up and fire. There they go. And they have some pretty cool sound effects, and their explosions are a lot more climactic. So, just kind of prettier. Things got cleaned up a little bit. And then on the cannon side, uh, they got a VFX update as well for when they fire. Just a little bit cleaner, but uh, a bit more damage! A bit more damage! Just a bit. Just a smidge more damage, guys. Just a bit. So what happened is they did overall get the Grand Cathay treatment. It feels like. It feels like. Right, I don't have patch notes, but... The Empire Cannons feel like they're more accurate. It feels like they have a better arc of fire. And when they hit, they're just more impactful overall. So I think Dwarven... Uh, uh, Empire Cannons and Dwarven Cannons will be back on the menu as far as, like, meta and things go. But, uh... Double-hitting Chariot still seems to be there, so say goodbye to those War Wagons forever. Alright, so we're just gonna run... The old stuff back. This is back on the normal patch. The Empire cannons are firing. Doing a bit less damage. I guess the mortars look more similar than I thought. Maybe they only got a slight VFX upgrade, or maybe I'm just stupid. I could just be stupid. It is possible. The cannons do feel less impactful and less accurate on live than they did in uh, the other one. Not just through one test. This test is for the sake of the video, but I've obviously, I've been playing a lot of um, I've been playing a lot of practice games with people and over time forming these opinions. But yeah, I don't know. I thought the mortars. Looked and sounded prettier. Maybe I'm just delusional about that. I'll take the L there. Cannons for sure, though. Cannons for sure. Better. Fire again. They're just, like, less accurate and less impactful. I saved the best for last as far as the Empire free LC updates go. Now, I personally enjoy the Witch Hunter quite a lot. But I think most people will find the Steam Tank has been the best thing that changed. It did get a new trait called Armored Vehicle, which I imagine will get a lot of use out of this upcoming DLC. This vehicle is heavily armored, allowing it to block almost all missile fire directed at its front and missiles at its sides, but only a little bit in the rear. And it has 70... Wait, 70% 70 of small arms fire hitting it from the front and sides. A brand new gold shield but its back is not shielded. 
So the steam tank did get a little bit of a tune-up on that aspect, so now it is almost invulnerable to small arms fire like archers and handguns and stuff like that. But it also got a little bit of a, of a performance update as it now is much more of a melee chariot. Has multiple guns, there's a pistol guy on top, there's a steam cannon, and then there's a main cannon. And it does charge through infantry a lot better doing tons of damage to them and taking very little in its own right. So it performs a little bit more like the Grail Knights, kind of, as it just rolls through things. Kind of like the Tsarina Chariot as well. And you can see how easily it paths through infantry. Now that makes it a really good box buster, but it is terrible at dueling single entities. It is, it is garbage at it. And if you have anti-large armor-piercing single entities, it'll do, you know, they'll just destroy it pretty badly. It can't sit in halberds, and it gets deleted by artillery, because artillery doesn't uh, get blocked 75%. It takes the full damage from artillery. So I think, th I think the steam tank will be meta. I think it'll be pretty strong. It's kind of whooping Volkmar's ass because it's using all of its ammunition on him. Look, it's almost out of ammo. But once it runs out of ammo, it's a fairly bad melee combatant. You can see it's taking serious damage when it sits in the spears. So you do have to constantly mic it micro it around and keep it moving. Its ammunition is extremely low. So then it'll soon run out and just be a chariot. But I don't mean to say it's bad. I'm just saying to beat the steam tank, you're going to need to bring anti-large armor-piercing cavalry. You're going to have to bring monsters of some kind. You're going to have to bring a good armor-piercing duelist or a bunch of halberds and hope your opponent makes mistakes. But if you just take a full light infantry build and maybe some archers, yeah, you're going to have a bad time trying to stop the steam tank. It is very good at punishing those kinds of builds. But again, cavalry will do pretty well against it. It's fine, but it is strong, so that's cool. And now to take the old steam tank for a spin. And just see how it does before the updates. So it'll drive in. Get a little charge off, do some decent damage. Not as much damage. And it's having a bit harder of a time getting through these guys. Now it is getting through them, but it's not doing as much damage. And there it's starting to really get bogged down. So, different. Definitely better. Though I feel like the steam tank on the Thrones of Decay uses its ammunition so much quicker. So, that'll be interesting. So as I do this fun little thing, we're just going to look at the steam tanks with their 70% missile resistance versus some cannons in case people are worried they're too OP or something. Uh, overall, I'll say, uh, when I actually did the direct comparison, some of the things I was excited about didn't pan out. You know what, that's fair. I'll take the L on that. Warp fire throwers do roughly the same damage, but they I will say they are more usable. I'll stand by that. Um, Iron Drakes didn't actually get a big improvement on damage either. Though again, they feel more robust, more usable, which I'll stand by that. Um, there was a lot of really cool changes in the Empire, and that cannot be denied, like Witch Hunters and all that stuff. So we'll have three Thunderers shoot at that Steam Tank for now. Oh, wow, that's a lot of damage. Oh, wow, that's so much damage. All right, Cannons, take out that other Steam Tank. So anyway. There's still some good stuff in these updates that I'm very excited about. I am super, super excited to cast a bunch more games and host tournaments on Thrones of Decay. I think it'll be really fun. I'm excited to dig into the DLC units, even if not everything is perfect all the time. I'm still very happy with it. Um, I will say, I think it's a Nurgle's a little, little underwhelming, but sometimes that is the, the nature of things. There's some good cannon hits. That's much more of what I was used to. There we go. All right. First volley just missed a couple. But then they got there. Um, anyway, yeah, this is closing thoughts about the free LC experience and uh, then showing this. The steam tank is really powerful if you just spam infantry, but artillery or dedicated arm piercing duelists can deal with it quite easily. As we saw these cannons in two volleys almost kill the steam tank and it took three volleys from two cannons to kill one outright. But that does mean they got thousands of value in about two minutes time. So not bad. Uh, yeah, the free LC stuff is really cool. I'm very excited for the Witch Hunter, very excited to play Empire and Dwarves. Nurgle, not so much, but I'll see what their DLC units hold. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and hopefully it brings you some excitement, too. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.